Hello guys. So this is your ophthalmology guru, Dr. Neha Agrawal, and I'll be talking about the INICT ophthalmology questions. Now coming to the next question, which of the following statements is false regarding the progression of the ocular hypertension to the primary open angle glaucoma POAG? So I don't know what has happened to them. They are not asking the questions on the cataract of late. They are asking questions on glaucoma. And as I always say, anti-glaucoma drugs is a high yield topic all the time. It is being added in your, uh, you know, high list uh, topics also. So they are asking about glaucoma. Now, uh, if you remember, what is the terminology? We always uh, discuss this. So I will say that glaucoma is actually frequently characterized by a triad. And what is this triad? We have raised intraocular pressure. What is the normal range? It is 11 to 21 mm of the mercury. Then we have the optic disc changes, optic disc changes and then we have the visual field defects. So these are the three criteria and we require at least two criteria out of the three. Out of the three criteria, I require at least two criteria in order to call it as glaucoma. Okay. That means if I have only one criteria present, if there is only raised intraocular pressure, if the person is having only raised intraocular pressure, there is no optic disc changes and there are no visual field defects, okay. Then I will not call it as glaucoma because there is only one of the criteria that is present here. Then this is called as ocular hypertension. So be very, very clear with your terms. Ocular hypertension is nothing but the presence of the raised intraocular pressure, okay. And if I have got the optic disc changes, Okay, another scenario, optic disc changes plus the visual field defects. Okay, but we have got the normal or low IOP. If I have got the optic disc changes, I have the visual field defects, I can see the changes of glaucoma, but the intraocular pressure is normal or the intraocular pressure is in the, uh, towards the lower side. Then this is called as the normal tension glaucoma or the low tension glaucoma. Then this is called as normal tension glaucoma or the low tension glaucoma and you know, POAG is actually the most common type of glaucoma. That is why I think they are asking so much about this glaucoma. So this is the most common type of glaucoma and about 16% of the people, 16% of the people are actually manifesting in the form of normal tension glaucoma. It is 1, 6, 16% who are manifesting with the normal tension glaucoma. Now, there are certain, uh, you know, school of thoughts that whether we should treat, okay, before looking at the options, I want to uh, discuss about it so that we can have an effective uh, interaction about the options. So, <clears throat> are there any chances of the conversion of this ocular hypertension, of this ocular hypertension in the primary open angle glaucoma? So yes, ocular hypertension people have the chances of conversion of the primary open angle glaucoma if they have got the high risk factors. So if they have the high risk factors, then we have to, <coughs> what you call as, treat them because they have the chances of getting converted into POAG, frank POAG. So what are actually these high risk factors? You have to see this. So first important thing, as I always try to relate it with the alphabets, one is A. A is for aging. So as the age will increase, there are more and more chances that a person having the ocular hypertension can go into primary open angle glaucoma. Then B. B is the big, big IOP. So if IOP is quite more, that is more than 30 mm of mercury. Like normal range, you know, is 11 to 21 mm of mercury. So if I am having quite a big IOP, that is more than 30 mm of mercury. Again, it's a high risk factor and this person has more chances of getting converted into your 
POET. Then coming to third, third is C. C is the central corneal thickness. Central corneal thickness. So if I have central corneal thickness which is less than 550 microns. If it is less than 550 microns, so in a way I can say if the person has a thin cornea. If a person has a thin cornea, then we have more chances that the patient will be getting converted into POAG. Then coming to the fourth, fourth is with D. So increased CD ratio. If I have increased CD ratio, which is more than 0.7. So, uh, CD ratio, you know, what is the normal CD ratio? Normal is 0 0.3 to 0 0.4 and it can go even up to 0 0.6. So, if it is more than 0 0.7, then it is definitely high and it's a high risk factor that this person can be converting and predisposing towards the open angle glaucoma. Then number 5. If we have the splinter hemorrhages, if the hemorrhages are also present, splinter hemorrhages over the optic disc, obviously that is also a sign towards the raised intraocular pressure going much uh, beyond because only then the capillary leaks will be there and you are going to see the hemorrhages. So if there are hemorrhages over the optic disc, I can get the high risk and then I have something called as the pattern standard deviation. So if I am having this pattern standard deviation, pattern standard deviation, this is PSD. So if this is also getting increased, so when do you get this? Increased pattern standard deviation, this is obtained on the Humphreys. Okay, Humphreys analyzer. So these are your six points which are called as the high risk factors. Very, very important. And if you remember, I keep on saying this in classes also, the risk factors are most important. They are always asked. Risk factors of glaucoma, uh, diabetic retinopathy, retinal detachment, cataract, everything. Okay. So whenever the patient has uh, ocular hypertension along with these high risk factors, I must say, if the patient is having ocular hypertension along with the high risk factors, this person should be treated on the lines of POAG. Then nothing, we have to treat this patient on the lines of POAG only because there, there are so many chances that this person will develop POAG ultimately. While there is a second thing, when the person has the only low risk factors or I can say high risk factors are not present. So ocular hypertension is there but person does not have the high risk factors. We have only those risk factors which are the risk factors of POAG itself. Now what are the risk factors of POAG? So number one, if the person is having the family history, family history of glaucoma is there. Okay, or we have diabetes, uh, hypertension, uh, smoking, these are the common risk factors. Then we have got uh, myopia, we have myopia or uh, what you call as thyrotoxicosis, we have um, thyrotoxicosis and uh, then we also have what you call as the steroid response, okay, if the person is taking the steroid. So steroid responders, those who actually show increase in the IOP due to the steroids, they are called as the steroid responders. So I will not say that they are not the risk factors, they are the risk factors, but they are just the low risk factors. They are the risk factors of POAG, but they are not having, not having extra risk, extra risk of conversion. They do not have the extra risk of conversion from the ocular hypertension to the POAG. So they have the risk of glaucoma in itself but they are not having the added risk that their ocular hypertension can get converted into POAG. So this is the basic that you should know. Now if you see this question what they are trying to say in this question. 
Which of the following statement is false? Okay, so let's see which is a, a false statement. The option number A is reducing the IOP is effective in delaying the incidence of POAG. So this is actually a true statement. Obviously, I told you, if you look here, IOP. IOP is a high risk factor. Can you see here? So if IOP is more than 30 mm of mercury, certainly this person will have more and more risk of getting converted to POAG. So what is the, uh, you know, solution for this? I should decrease the IOP. So if I decrease the IOP, Will this decrease the incidence of getting converted from ocular hypertension to POAG? Yes, definitely yes. So this is a true statement. Then coming to the second one, thin cornea is a risk factor for the POAG development. So this is again certainly a risk factor. We have seen in the C that the central corneal thickness also matters. So if this thickness is less than 550 microns, then this thin cornea can again be a high risk factor for the conversion from the ocular hypertension to POAG. So that means this is also a true statement. So this is also a true statement. Then look at the C option. Family history is not a risk factor for POAG. Now they are actually telling you with respect to conversion of ocular hypertension in POAG. So family history is not a risk factor as far as the conversion from ocular hypertension to POAG is concerned. Yes, <coughs> isolated, it is a risk factor. We have the like family history, diabetes, hypertension. I did told you here everything. So if you see here, we have got so many things. These all are risk factors of the POAG, but they are not having the extra risk from the ocular hypertension to POAG conversion. So in that respect, if I say, then this statement is also true. It is a risk factor, but it is not a, a risk factor for the conversion of ocular hypertension to the POAG. So by default, now you are left, you are, you are left with the D option. Increased CD ratio is a risk factor for the POAG development. Now, increased CD ratio is definitely uh, a risk factor for the POAG development. Uh, if we, I have increased CD ratio, that is more than 0 0.7. So, if I have more uh, CD ratio, more than 0 0.7, then definitely I have more and more chances of this conversion, okay, from the ocular hypertension to POAG. So, this is a perfectly true statement. This is perfectly a true statement. So, if I have to say one of the statements, if I have to choose only that which of the false statement, then in that respect, I will say that C is an option because they are saying that family history is not a risk factor for POAG. So, definitely family history is a risk factor for POAG, but it is not a high risk factor for the conversion from the ocular hypertension to POAG. So, it is the most fitted answer out of the all otherwise if I see with respect to POAG then it is a uh, from the ocular hypertension conversion to the POAG then even this statement is true okay but uh, I think uh, you, sh you should realize this that marking the answer is always relative if you have more uh, three more correct answers than the one that is less correct will be your answer. So, reducing IOP is effective in delaying the incidence of POAG. Definitely true. Thin cornea is a risk factor for POAG development. This is true. Family history is not a risk factor for POAG. And increased CD ratio is definitely a risk factor for the POAG development. So, I hope you got the idea and the approach how to solve these questions. And uh, in future, we are expecting to get the better options.